Well, that's not exactly how that was supposed to go. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Let's do a quick breakdown of March Madness. Game one, day one, BYU falls to Duquesne. Kansas escapes Samford in what was stolen valor at the end. Like the, the one shining moment highlight, a great block that's taken away, but I guess it benefits a Big 12 team, so why not? Iowa State takes down South Dakota State. That was one of the few Big 12, true Big 12 highlights of the day. Texas beats Colorado State. Colorado State score. 11 points in the first half. That was ugly and not fun. And I guess Texas is a Big 12 team. And then maybe the most disappointing thing that's ever happened ever uh, was not just BYU losing, but also Texas Tech losing to NC State. The same team that ran through the ACC tournament probably shouldn't have made March Madness. It shouldn't have made March Madness. They wouldn't have unless they won the ACC, ACC tournament. They did that. And then they beat Texas Tech. For BYU, we'll start there. That was the first game of the day. I, by the way, it's like, it's one o'clock Eastern time, one o'clock in the Caribbean sea here. And I've just been basketball all day long. And I don't know if it's like the heat, the sun, what it was watching the BYU game, but I just kept thinking, why aren't they shooting more threes? Which is not something you usually say during a BYU game. Cause Mark Pope in the pregame said, I have taught my guys to shoot 30 threes per game. BYU shot 24 threes. My message early in the season was that BYU is going to live and die by the three. They're going to die. They're going to lose in March. It's not how you win. And if you watched this game and you thought BYU died by the three, you were absolutely wrong. Duquesne was a more physical team. It felt like BYU did not have, like they had lost a step. Like Duquesne was playing for more. Like, I don't know what they were waving out in front of them. I guess like their head coach is retiring at the end of the year because his wife is in bad health. And that's the story. When you hear that story in March, like, oh, well, that's not good. We're probably going to get upset. That's how usually how those, like I, I've told you this. I, that's why I think Purdue is going to go to the final four. When there is a storyline here in March, that seems to matter so much more than what should actually happen in the game. Uh, Ali Khalifa did not have his best performance ever in the world in front of all of America. And that was a very common talking point on Twitter. Another thing that I think I think puts BYU behind, they played eight guys. I know Jackson Robinson's great. Him being the sixth man is not bad. I don't hate that. I've never hated it. I've never told you this season that's a bad thing. But the team as a whole making eight threes, that's like one for every guy that played, is not what BYU needs to do. They didn't shoot the 33s that Mark Pope wanted. Had they shot 33s, I do think they win this game. They got out of what they usually do. And I like a team in March who's starting five, plays like 30 minutes a game and BYU didn't do that. Now Duquesne didn't necessarily do that, but I think the Cougars went so deep in the bench that there was never really a rhythm until the middle part of the second half where it was okay, go in the game here. And they didn't go in the game there uh, late. There was a shot. BYU got away from it. It was almost, it's almost like, and I kept asking, can BYU be more balanced? Can they play better defense? Can they show that they can score inside? And one of my favorite parts of the season for BYU was seeing them score 40 points in the paint in a game or 45 points in the paint in a game. And, and in this one, it was like, oh, now's the time where you should show the lethal side of BYU from beyond the arc. And they just didn't uh Khalifa was the only starter who shot more than three three pointers he shot four he went over four he was over six overall and put up zero points when your big guy the dude that like I that I probably talked about him more than anybody else for BYU holy cow BYU's hard to stop he wasn't and BYU lost that is what we call in this industry not good after the BYU game was Iowa State and San Diego State. I had, see, I don't even know who they were playing. South Dakota State. Guess why? I don't care. I don't care. This I have Iowa State in my final four. They're playing 15 seed South Dakota State. Someone sent me, are you going to tweet about this game? No. The hot tub I was in at the cruise didn't have the game on. Guess why? Because it really wasn't that close. I know at times it was neck and neck. And South Dakota State played a close game, a good a close, a good game. And, and they were like, oh, you know, hey, oh, oh, scary jackrabbits. I was never worried. I mean, I'm like score updates. I always say it's up by four. That's fine. Oh, I always say it's up by six. That's fine. Uh, I always say it's up by 15. Sweet. That's exactly how we thought this game was going to go. This is small potatoes for a team that can go to the final four. And that I have my final four. This is small potatoes. Then it was the freaking Texas game. I, you know, it was eight to two. Colorado State gets out eight to two. I'm thinking, ha, I told you. I told somebody on the cruise ship. I said, Texas has a bunch of guys 
that can either play offense or defense. Like, there's not a really good mix. Like, the Weaver guy, great on offense, or great on defense, bad on offense. Like, Max Asmus, like, oh, his defense isn't bad by any means. The offense is certainly the, the catalyst for him. I just, uh, you know, I just, and then I thought that was going to happen. I thought, like, oh, Texas just can't play a complete game. They're going to have, like, oh, the offense is good from this guy, but they couldn't put together the defense for everybody. And then it was just too compartmentalized, and I was wrong. Uh, they hold Colorado State to 11 points in the first half, so what Texas has in just okay performance offensively in the game altogether, 56 points, the defense was un. Believable, uh, holding Colorado State to 44 points total. So Texas wins, and I guess they're a Big 12 team, so we'll count it. Just like that college football playoff appearance, that's fine by me. The Texas Tech game, I don't know, man. I don't know. It it wasn't like the BYU game it, because this just wasn't like the, it got worse and worse. The more you watched, the worse it got. The the idea that Texas Tech would lose in the first round, it was not one that I was familiar with. I thought there was just no way that this team would get to March and and fall apart because they reminded me so much of that Kansas State team that went to the Elite Eight last season. This scrappy squad got a couple of guys you've heard of on the national level, like Pop Isaacs and Toussaint. They're not big names, but they're there. And could they lead? And from Williams to Jennings, like could they have this random awesome run in March? And I believed it. I I, I believed in Grant McCaslin. And then some big guy for NC State who showed up like he was going to work at the office, like lunch pail dude. Back Hanging in the post ruins all of my dreams. And NC State wins by 13, 80 to 67. Um, there there came, I came a point in the second half. I, Texas Tech was down by four at halftime. I thought, oh, it's fine. It's March. Things happen. Then there's like 10 minutes to go. I was like, oh, this isn't good, is it? They're probably going to lose, aren't they? And they did. They didn't come back. There was just, it was stagnant the rest of the way. The fact that there was uh, so little fight in the last three to four minutes that they couldn't create, like Samford, right? Sam, we're going to talk about that next. Good segue. Samford was able to come back and fight. It's like, oh, can we get that from Texas Tech? And the answer was no. Speaking of Samford, yes, bad call. There were a couple times where I thought, oh, poor Samford. He, and, and if you're a Kansas fan, you cannot deny that the Allen Fieldhouse whistle is a thing. We, we've seen Kansas benefit from Big 12 officiating before. Not more than other teams. Maybe not more than other teams. I think like when you play in Hilton or play in the Marriott Center that I like we argue that all the time. The Big 12 officials are just so bad that it's tough to narrow down, you know, exactly who gets the good whistle. But Kansas is the powerhouse team. So they blame it on them. And guess what? If Kansas does get a favorable whistle, that's good for you, Kansas fans. Who cares? Nobody's taking away wins and losses from you. You won the game here <clears throat> late. Samford gets a block would have created an awesome finish to this game. It still was a pretty fun finish. Um, and, and I will give uh, literally all the crowd. Like I just, I cannot speak highly enough about what Samford did the running and the gunning. And they played like 11 different guys and shot 37 threes and made 16 of them. That's what I kind of wanted from BYU against Duquesne. They shot 73 shots altogether. Kansas only shot 58. There's a 15 shot difference here. And Kansas wins the game because they shot 60%. The defense was not there for Sanford and Kansas was conservative for the three point shots, especially in the second half. At some point, they're like, hey, guys, we're not making these. Maybe we should just stop doing that. And we're not really making our free throws. Maybe we should just get the ball to Hunter Dickinson and tell Hunter Dickinson or KJ Adams to go score the basketball. I thought Timberlake was fantastic. Fantastic. He had the. <clears throat> Rust isn't the right word, but he's been sprung into a situation now uh, that is different. Like you're relying on him to be a starter for Kansas, Kansas. So like for Nicholas Timberlake, you are a guy as a guard for the Jayhawks that has to perform for Kansas to win a March Madness. I thought he did that. Again, Rust isn't the right word. He wasn't 100 percent. He wasn't complete in this game. The Ramones were like, oh, what are you doing? Don't do that. Oh, ooh, oh. but in totality, when it mattered the most, he made his shots. He took care of the ball enough late in the game uh, to get the win. And Kansas moves on. This is just, this is Bill Self. It's like, you know, Sanford's good. They're really good. And I had them pick to win this game because I thought after watching the Big 12 tournament, ooh, is Kansas okay? And without Kevin McCullough, is Kansas, you know, like, who Hunter Dickinson, you know, the shoulder deal, like, <clears throat> I don't know. I just didn't know. And I should have trusted Bill Self. It's like, don't don't bet against Bill Self or Tom Izzo in March. Those guys win. And Bill Self wins again. You know? Like, I, I should have known, too. And Kevin McCullough's out. There's another McDonald's All-American or four-star player sitting right there for Kansas. They're going to be just as good. Can now Kansas turn this into a run? I think so. <clears throat> 
The reason I think so is let's let's switch teams. Let's switch teams. Let's say that this was Ole Miss, four seed Ole Miss, who was kind of injured, banged up, scrappy, got a win against a really solid 13 seed. I don't have a lot of confidence in that. They're not an established program, not an established culture. For Kansas, they are. That's why I think Kansas could keep. No, I am mad. I'm mad and I'm sad and I'm disappointed. I'm all the things. You know, like you don't get that back. You're done. You have to go home now. Yeah, like, you know, like I just like even Kentucky. I'm not even that mad at Kentucky. It's like that's funny. It's hilarious. John Calipari is going home to Oakland, right? Oakland, who's not even in California. Like Oakland, the team from Michigan, <laughs> that rocks. Uh, and and that, I think that's awesome. That's a, that's the great part of March. Dayton, the comeback against Nevada. That's a great part of March. It's like Drake lost. That sucks. BYU lost. Hated that. Would have been cool to see McNeese State win. I picked Gonzaga though. Uh, Tennessee killing St. Peter's. No one likes that. No one. I just. I don't know. Like yesterday wasn't that fun. We didn't have enough upsets for it to be fun. The Kentucky one takes the cake. That made it fun. The 11 seeds smashing the six seeds was cool. But it's like, ah, uh, you know, where's my 14 seed? My 15 seed. Thankfully, Oakland was that. They got to be the darlings of the day. Hopefully, there's more of that today. Um, this this show today is uh, brought to you by some sponsors. Let's tell you, let's tell you about the Lockdown Big 12, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is unreal and a new sponsor of Lockdown. They sent me a whole package. Awesome. The reason I'm clean shaven, Manscaped. This episode is brought to you by those guys. This season, make sure you groom your carpets and the drips with the leader in below the waist and above the waist grooming. Clear out the winter bush with Manscaped. The Lawnmower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom like springtime flowers. Embrace the season. Join the 10 million men who've used Manscaped. And this is an offer that I think is kind of crazy. One of the best offers I've ever seen. Manscaped.com. Code locked on. 20% off of your order and free shipping. Free shipping alone is going to get me to buy it. Now, 20% off too. After using Manscaped, I have the spring fever. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Two interchangeable trimmer features, next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. How wild is that? And waterproof. Shave in the shower. Don't get hair everywhere. Shave in the shower. Manscaped, 20% off. Free shipping. Can I? I got, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to tell. 20% off free shipping. Code locked on at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. Code locked on. 20% off free shipping. Nothing like a little spring cleaning. But in your pants, today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. It's also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time's where I go. When I need tickets, it's like, oh, I need tickets. It's Game Time. I like to buy tickets a half hour before the game starts. Why? I'm sicko. And the, the prices plummet at Game Time. Killer last minute deals, all in prices. Views from your seat, the best price guaranteed. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. You see the price? That's the price you get. Flash deals, zone deals, last minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from the seat. I told you that. Views from the seats. Like that's the, you know, like I'm going to a concert. I want to know where I'm going to sit. Fourth row. You know, but in my barrier, is there a column in the way? Game Time tells you. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, brother. That's guaranteed. If you're talking Big Twelve expansion. We're talking with Drake Toll, Locked On Big 12. Of course, at Drake C. Toll on X, formerly known as Twitter. Voice of the party animals, by the way. The uh, the opponent, is that what we call it? Of the, of the right, Savannah yeah. Bananas? Sure. Yeah, the, yeah, the opponent, the partner, call it whatever you would like. It's a big thing right now. But so, too, is Clemson leaving the ACC. Your initial reaction for what this means and what the Big 12 should be doing right now. Well, first and foremost, Spencer, there'll be the, some that push back and say, well, what if Clemson doesn't win the lawsuit? What if Clemson is stuck in the ACC? And here's the quote that I would give them from the Tampa Bay Times. Clemson argues the only games subject to the ESPN deal they are currently in their grant of rights involve ACC teams, not games played if and when Clemson is no longer an ACC member. Clemson put in a lawsuit if and when Clemson is no longer an ACC member. The day is coming. Florida State wants out. Clemson wants out. And maybe the most important part of this is the context of timing. The college football playoff board of directors just told us the Big Ten and the SEC are going to make a whole lot more money than everybody else. If you're Clemson and Florida State, you're seeing the Big 12 is making more money than you per team in a TV deal. And now it's so close in the college football playoff revenue distribution that you feel 
cut out, left out as a power brand in college athletics. Therefore, Clemson wants to go somewhere Isn't else. Isn't the ACC deal an average? I thought it was 36 million. Yeah, you're sitting about 17% down to 15% of the Big 12. But the ESPN contract itself signed through 2031 for the Big 12 is more per team than 2036's contract in the ACC. So they will make more in the college gotcha. football playoff. So the ro- the, the, yeah, the, ro- the rolling average in the ACC mm-hmm. is more. But bottom line, for what, what people should understand is the money here is – comparable at the very least like there's not a huge gap between the big 12 deal and the acc deal no 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 and overall based on what you'll be making in 2036 the big 12 teams based on not just college football playoff but the actual tv deal from espn itself those teams like a kansas state will make more than clemson and guess who's not happy about that clemson now i don't think they would make this move unless there was a suitor out there, the Big Ten or the SEC, because it's not going to be the Big 12. And the reason there's a suitor is because the college football playoff board of directors said, hey, in 2028, let's revisit this. And if any of you guys have expanded a bit, maybe we'll toss you some more money. And that is the go for the Big 12, the ACC, the SEC, and the Big Ten to expand as fast as possible with whoever possible, which with, with whatever is profitable. That's why this happened when it happened. The initial bombshell, it's like, okay, well, now they're actually doing it. I, I think to me, that's not shocking it's the reason they are doing it is because now everyone needs to expand by 2028 to get that pay bump in the look in and more than anything clemson can't make less than kansas state in 2036 they're tired of making so much less than the big 10 of the sec yeah, and that that's, I think, a driver. But I think the, the credibility or pedigree component is arguably yeah, yeah. as big of a factor. You look at what happened to Florida State this past year. Can that happen in the 12s or 14 or, you know, once we get to a 60-14 yeah. playoff? No, of course, that, that that cannot happen. I'm only half being facetious there. I have no idea when playoff expansion is, is going to stop because why would it? There's more money to be made. Anyway, so I, I think that for, for Clemson, they feel to me – more like the SEC. Yeah. Florida State, I think, can fit in either of these two conferences, the SEC or the Big Ten. Clemson feels more SEC to me. The interesting thing, though, Drake, is neither of these conferences are in a position of need. All right. Like I don't look at either league and the realignment moves and how everything is shuffled and the teams and the brands that were already there. And from a financial pedigree, television rating standpoint, neither one of these conferences needs Florida State and Clemson. They just might end up wanting them. But I don't think these schools are going to go their separate ways. I think they probably move together. And it's just a question of, do you think it's more a question of which league wants them more or which league they want more? I, I think it's which league wants them more. And maybe more importantly, it's which league wants separation. When we said last week that the SEC and the Big Ten are the exact same, you get the same revenue distribution. Each one looked at the other and said, well, why don't we get more? We feel like we have more prowess in college athletics. And if by 2028, we can make even more money than the other guy in this race to stay alive that everyone seems to be competing in, let's do it. If we can make the most money of anybody by 2028, we can make more money. Let's do it. So I think the Big Ten is especially we've seen in their in their realignment strategy where they've gone way out west and just completely broken all barriers. They want to make money. That's the only reason USC and UCLA and the like have moved into the Big Ten. The SEC has tried to stay regional, but my thing is footprint. Will the SEC grasp at a Clemson, grasp at a Florida State? I, I still believe, Spencer, in 2009, Clemson had the 48th best football revenue in the country. It's behind Bowling Green. It was a 10-year stretch of winning that made them good. What happens if they're middle of the pack the next 10 years? Then what? Do they fall back down to 48th in the country? I don't think so. But the SEC is at least wondering that. Where does that brand go if they don't win? Is there staying power for Clemson? I'm not sure if the SEC believes in that enough, though they might just believe in Florida State. Yeah, they could. And, you know, The state of Florida is such a big, uh, you know, there's a television market component, but there's a recruiting component when I think the state of Florida and college football, like the three biggest recruiting states, Florida, Texas, California, you put them in whatever order you want. But I I think the the SEC has the chance to just completely dominate the state of Florida. You get a Florida, you get a Florida state and you you could maybe dip your toe in and get Miami. You could probably get Miami on the cheap right now because Miami is, you know, as we talked about here on yesterday's show, probably the next school to make a move, whether that's a lawsuit or 
investigate, you know, what uh, the exit fee would be to get out of the ACC and, and everything like that. But I, I want to get you out of here on a Big 12 note. Yeah. Clemson and Florida State, let's say they leave the ACC and just for the sake of argument, go to the SEC and the, the rest of the ACC, let's say, including Miami, they all stand pat and they're not able to get a power to invite. Is it worth it for the Big 12 to go and explore adding you know, the top targets that we've talked about before that would maybe make the most sense would be Pitt and Louisville if mm -hmm. they were able to come up with the money to leave the ACC. Yeah, Brett Yormark is now on the offensive, and we know that from what he mentioned during these meetings with the college ball playoff where they're trying to figure out the revenue distribution. When it was set for the Big 12 to make about half as much as the Big 10 and the SEC, Yormark's response was, wait a second, let's place a look-in clause here so that in a couple of years when everything is shaken out in expansion, we can renege where we put these revenue numbers for each conference. What Yormark wants to do right now is expand to get that revenue bump up and he's going to do that with teams that are the middle to upper part of the pack. In the but ACC. is that going to expand? If you if you bring in Louisville and Pitt, does that expand the Big 12's revenue in a significant way? Uh, Louisville, yes. Louisville, yes. The Pitt, you look at the rivalry and the possible TV market as well. Like I'm walking in a, in a mall the other day in, in Georgia and I see Pittsburgh Steelers uniforms, right? You can build a brand out of the city of Pittsburgh and Louisville itself is a very profitable athletic program when they are winning. And that's the case for a lot of Big 12 and even back in SEC teams. When Ole Miss is winning, they're top 25. When they're not, they are a Big 12 team from a revenue standpoint. So when it's just talking money right here, the Big 12 can take a Louisville, a Pitt, a Miami, the footprint of a UNC of Virginia, that's kind of your wish list right there. And then how does Virginia Tech and NC State, how do those two teams shake out? I think the Big 12 of that pack wants to get to 20. That seems to be the fair cutoff. And then if you're a Syracuse, a Wake Forest, a Boston College, you don't exist anymore. Yeah, I, I think UNC and Virginia, just just my suspicion, I don't know that those university presidents would go for the Big 12. I think they'd go yeah. for the Big 10. Yeah. Otherwise, I, th those schools feel like to me, because of the academic component with those universities, I don't know if they would go towards the Big 12. And we have seen universities say, no, I'm not I'm not going yeah. here or I'm not going there or I don't want to do this. That's part of the reason that I think you have Calford in the ACC right now, because wow. they looked at the prospect of rebuilding the Pac-12, which, by the way, as I'm going to talk about uh, in, in and the next segment is, you know, certainly on the way because they got a good piece of news recently with, with all this playoff money and whatnot. But Cal and Stanford, I think, looked at the pack and said, you're going to rebuild with Boise State and Fresno. We're, we're, we're not affiliated with Boise State and Fresno State. We'd rather affiliate with the SMUs, the Dukes, the North Carolinas, Florida State and, and, and Clemsons of, of the world. So it, it's all very it's all very fascinating. It's crazy that we're going to have this awesome. much change before this much change has even taken yeah. place. We still haven't seen the 12 team playoff. And we're having all of these moves. Drake Toll locked on at Big 12. Everything you need for that conference, go check him out on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Drake, always a fun time. Uh, dude, I, I hate this for college athletics. I hate it for college football, but I Me do too. love the fact that we can go back and forth on all these scenarios. That in itself makes it electric at the very least. It is great content. It is not great <laughs> for the sport. That is the important yeah. distinction here. Today's show is brought to you by Nissan. I love Nissan. You know why I love Nissan? Because I drive a Nissan. The Nissan Armada is spectacular, though I drive a Maxima, and I like the Maxima, too. Today, you can get an Armada. It's kind of like the Yukon Huskies. They're described as an Armada, the top-seeded team, as hardcore as it gets. No matter where they've landed, they're the top overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite four of the Power Six champions being in their way in the East region. The Armada is just as strong as the Yukon Huskies. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Armada and go find your next big adventure at ShopNissanUSA.com. Again, that is at Shop Nissan. NissanUSA.com. Go find your new Armada. I think you're really going to like it. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. I've told you guys, I've done been telling you guys, FanDuel is the place that I go to make money. I like money. You probably like money. And if you're anything like me in the money category, you will go to FanDuel and help expand your money. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. Put a $5 bet on literally anything on any of the jazz you want to put a $5 bet on. And if it hits, you get $200 in bonus bets. Otherwise, some people know it's free play. You snag that sucker and it's going to be all right for you. FanDuel.com is the place you want to go today during March Madness to get paid. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. Visit that. Trust me, it will be worth it. Thanks for being here.
Let's do some more March Madness today. Today was a short show. Short show. I'm on a cruise. Um, well, yeah. That's that. Uh, this has been it always will be locked on. Thanks for making your first lesson every single day. Does a good on day.